Welcome back everyone. As you can see, it's another beautiful day in the 604. That means we gotta get to work. And the plan was to keep working on this project, but then disaster struck. Well, it looks like my plans changed and I gotta go buy some tires now. It's pretty much time I did anyways, because these things were, were on their last legs. They probably had 20% life. And a couple other things we're gonna do as well. We looked at the hub and wheel bearing on the passenger side front and she's worn out. So I'm not gonna put new tires on and spend all that money and have all that play in that wheel bearing. It's gonna change my toe angle and it's gonna greatly increase the wear on those tires. So now we've got a job to do. We've got a hub change and I know while I'm in there I'm gonna be doing the brakes because those are almost done as well. So we've got a day full of avalanche and I'm gonna show you how I change the front hub step by step. And you have to grab yourself the following list of tools here. And the next step is to remove the center cap. So I use my flat screwdriver or your pry bar and remove your center cap. The next step is to get your 36 millimeter socket, which I had to go purchase for this job, and use an impact and break that axle nut loose. Jack the vehicle up. And bring in your 22 millimeter socket and bust off the lug nuts. And once done, you remove your front tire and put it aside. Next thing you need to do is take the harness off for the ABS connection to the front hub. This is fairly straightforward. And there's a couple clips which hold it to the upper control arm and the front knuckle area. And then you move that out of the way. Then grab your 18 millimeter socket, and this is how I did it because I was changing the brakes anyways, and break the torque on the caliper mount to knuckle bolts. And once they're broken loose, you can wind those out. I chose to use a ratchet for this. And once those are removed, you can take your caliper off. And I used a bungee cord just to hold it up out of the way. You can use a zap strap or something to place it on, even if jack stand, but just keep that out of the way and don't keep a lot of tension on your brake hose there because they could break. Next, I continue to remove the 36 millimeter nut from the axle and use a screwdriver and a pair of needle nose here and I just fish out that big washer. And the next step after that is to remove the T27 Torx, which is the screw which holds the brake rotor to the front hub. Now we'll go in behind and remove the three 15 millimeter bolts that hold the hub flange to the front knuckle. And it's pretty difficult to get a lot of throw on your ratchet, so you may want to try using something else. Unlike me here, I'm fiddling away. And here I decided to speed things up, so I grabbed my air ratchet and proceeded to extract the last of the bolts that hold the hub to the front knuckle. And once those are loose, now you're gonna need your BFH, your big friendly hammer, or your big friggin' hammer, and you're gonna need to drive that hub off. Um, I didn't worry about beating on it because this had a dead bearing in there, but 
a lot of years of corrosion has seized this thing on. So once removed, push on the front axle shaft and you can extract the hub. Now before you put the new hub in, you might want to check the surface in here or the inner diameter of the front knuckle. Mine was really corroded, so I had to go in with a little bit of uh, sandpaper here and clean it off the surface. And then use my air, my shop air, and blow it out. And don't forget, when you're blowing this area clean, to also blow out the bolt holes for the bolts. Then I grabbed the brand new hub. This is a Mevotech hub. It was actually reasonably priced. It was unbelievable how much difference there was in price, but I got one for a reasonable price. And line up your backing plate. and feed your ABS harness while aligning the entire assembly. You may have to spend a bit of time just figuring out where the harness is gonna to route to. And then you're gonna to need to spline that hub to the front axle and line everything up at once. And then simply take your bolt and thread them in by hand. And once you get all of them started, mm -hmm. double check and make sure everything's gonna line up properly with your harness. Next, grab my air ratchet with the 15 mil and I spun those back home, tightening everything up nice and even. Don't over torque one side. You could potentially cock the whole hub as it's going into that bore on the spindle. Then you put the big washer on and I put the 36 millimeter nut back on. And I tighten it up. I did not torque it at this time. I just spun it down until I started to feel some torque build up on the, the impact. Next, I permanently attached the harness to the spindle area and to the upper control arm area and plug that in. Then I torqued the three 15 millimeter hub to knuckle bolts to the manufacturer's recommended torque spec. Next, I cleaned off the brand new rotor. Remember, I did replace the brakes on this. Um, so, brand new rotor going back on. Clean it off with some brake clean. This is just a preliminary cleaning. I will do a final clean once the entire assembly is, is ready to go back together. And this gets all the packing um, anti-corrosion compound off of the rotor as well. Then you align your rotor onto your new hub. Install your T27. And tighten that up. I didn't torque this, I just went snug. Do another little cleaning of your rotor and the next step will be to install your pads that I previously loaded into my caliper. So as you can see, I have a brand new set of pads there and now you've got your pads installed and install the bolts to hold the caliper bracket to the spindle and wind those in tightening them up evenly. Torque those to the manufacturer's recommended torque specs. And final cleaning, because I am a little bit cautious about having any grease or any buildup on my brake rotors. So next, get your torque wrench ready for the 36 millimeter nut and grab an apprentice or someone to help you out and have them really squeeze those, that brake down so it holds that whole assembly from rotating and then torque your 36 millimeter nut again to the manufacturer's recommended torque. And while I was in there, I did grease the upper and lower ball joints. You wanna clean all your mess up. All that's left is to install your wheel and torque it to the manufacturer's torque spec.
Well, that's it for this video, everyone. Try to get in there, get your hands dirty, and it's also nice to understand how it all goes for yourself. Don't be that guy that takes it to the dealership. It's way more rewarding in the end of the day and you save a bunch of money. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and hit the notification bell. And remember, the best time of the year to enjoy your project car is all year round, even if you're just working on it. Keep a shiny side up. Take care.